Coach, talk about Josh's progress, Zuru, and where he's come from, like the summer to now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I it obviously I know the, the the thought would be to be on one person, but you know, first as a group, I think these guys have all you know worked their butts off. Um, have shown improvement. And again, I've talked about it in the past as far as the group wanting to be, you're not a finished product in September that you are in October and November. And you're really, your goal is trying to play your best football in November. So specifically to Josh, he's demonstrated the capacity to, to improve on his, his power, on his balance. Um, he, we've moved him around. He's played tackle, he's played guard for us, he's played the jumbo tight end. Um, and, and I think that's, I, we kind of got a thing in our room about don't celebrate doing what's expected. Josh is now a third-year player. You kind of expect him to start to get into that wheelhouse of improving, you know. Um, and we would, you know. O line's a developmental position, and he's continued to develop and improve. What um, you came in here with fresh eyes. What made you think? I mean, I knew you did some guard, but mostly tackle. Like that was his best spot. Uh, I don't know yet if we know what his best spot is necessarily, but I think he can play tackle, and I think I can play it. He reminds me a lot of of, of two other players that I've had an opportunity to coach in my career. Um, you kind of see the same thing. There's, if you will, archetypes whether it's personalities, whether it's archetypes within the football and that O-line play, I think he kind of fits that mold. Um, and he's demonstrated with his play thus far in training camp through the early part of the season and preseason. Um, who are those guys? Find the, the best position. Sorry. Who are those guys uh, that, that, just to quickly follow up, uh, that you mentioned, uh, the two players? That he oh, reminds you of. Oh, I'm sorry. Like the first one sorry. off the top of my head is Justin Haran. Well, okay. I've, I've coached sure, Justin. Sure. Um, and then uh, Brandon Parker would be another one. Okay. How long does it take you to find best position for a guy that might not be in, that you said? I think you, you get utility players, and I and I think it probably takes a couple of years, eh, just to see them develop and see what they are. Going back to the thing we had talked about in the past about you don't judge a player when they're young, you don't judge them when they're when they're injured, um, so you don't get that opportunity to really know who they are. Um, so time helps with that. Some some guys you know right away, hey, this guy's going to be this. Other guys, it might take a year or two or an injury or a position move or later in their careers they make a switch. So. Yes. As a line coach, do you look to only replace one position when the guy's injured, or do you want your best five out there and you're willing to change two? Or I think you do your best to make one move, but if it's if the best move is to make multiple moves, then you make multiple moves. Um, you plan for that eventuality starting in the spring, and while you rot rotate guys, you guys talked about seeing different groupings in the spring. That's why you do it because injuries occur. So you just make the best of it. But if you had your druthers, you'd like to make one move, but you're not locked into that position. I think your adage of, of trying to play your best five is the most important thing. The past two years when you guys had injuries in Vegas, you moved Jermaine from the right to the left, you know, not every game, but a couple of times. Mm -hmm. yeah. why, why is this situation different? Firstly, I'd like to say that I harbor some ill will towards you because you posed this question two weeks ago I and I said you put that. the bumoik on us and here we are. So I just I want to put that on the <laughs> record. I want to put that on the record. Everybody was here. Um, yeah, no, Jermaine is, is a really talented football player that I've had the pleasure to coach with for the last few years. And that talent includes his capacity to be able to play left tackle for us. So um, we'll see how the process goes. I'll defer back to what Dave's had said earlier in the week. And, and we'll go out there on Sunday, and I'm certain somebody's going to be playing left tackle for us. Coach, uh, what do you see Evan Neal playing better? Right tackle, left tackle, what do you think is going to – Evan Neal. Evan Neal. Evan's done a great job of, of getting himself back into the mix here, of getting himself healthy, getting himself in a position to contribute to the club. Um, he has predominantly played at right tackle, but he played left tackle in college, um, and it's something that you know we've seen him do in the past, so we'll just kind of see how things go. Abel left the door open for the first time the other day to – Given him work in practice on the left, um, have you guys done that yet? And I'm a firm believer in the more you can do, the more you can do. You know, Jay Cubis has taken reps at all guards plus center. You know, Evan obviously having played it in the past, he feels comfortable having played over there when he was in college. So, you know, it's fine. Aaron Stinney played left tackle in college too. So, I mean, everybody, you know, gets an evaluation and a thought. So Evan obviously missed a lot of time in the spring and in camp. Yeah, injuries happen. No, but I'm just going to say, how much development time can you do in the season where I think the... <clears throat> yeah, that's never over, That's especially at our position. Like, James Ferentz is doing a great job with these guys. They come out, because um, you're limited in season on individual time, but we're going to get that work in, whether it's special teams. But we also come out, the old guys come out 15 minutes early, and they do an individual period. I don't know if you guys are able to be out here, but um, there's a group of guys. John Michael is a starting center coming out here. He's a younger player, so he's out here doing extra late. You know, if you're doing, you know, post practice, you know, hey, listen, I need to work on my hands. I saw Evan out there working on his hands post practice. You know, so it, it is expected because you need. If you're green, you're growing. If you're ripe, you're dying. And especially with the young players.
players, like like continuing those fundamentals um, in season, whenever you can find them, like, well, like we've got to continue to do it. And he does. So they've been doing extra, um, whatever it may do uh, that applies to that individual. That extra work usually is, hey, my sets are this, or hey, I don't feel this, or hey, I'm going to work at this position. So. Um, but you definitely need to do extra because, in, like you said, in, in season, you're limited on some time. Carm, a couple of weeks ago when we were talking to you about Evan, you said it, it had only been two weeks or it had only been a couple of weeks with him. I, I didn't follow up and clarify what you meant by that. Well, I, I mean, I just think that, you know, we had some setbacks in the spring, observably so. We obviously, he had, he had surgery, and then we have a setback, so you're kind of limited on what he can do. It's more, you know, when you're doing the on-the-field football stuff. And then you get into training camp, and he starts on PUP, yeah. and you're easing a player back into it because you're looking to not get a setback. So, really, we had about, what, about two weeks. We played one preseason game, maybe about 15 reps in the preseason. So, you really had had a limited time just back on the field doing football stuff. You know, do, doing all the all the the sled pushes and the change of directions and everything else, but I think offensive line play and the movements and the positions that your body's put in is such a unique thing that you've got to go out and do that job. And because he started on PUP and he was limited through training camp, and then we get into it, that it really at that point, you know, had only been about three four weeks of him actually doing O line stuff, you know, at a full speed live tempo rep. Like through the regular season, like since week one, he's been. Practicing with yeah, the offense. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I mean, three weeks ago we were what, four weeks into the season, so he'd weeks, been. Yeah. Yeah. So how, uh, I'm not great at math. <laughs> and physically, how is he? Evan. Yeah, he's been tremendous. He's great. Um, what did you like about the Seattle performance from your group? And then what do you feel like you need to clean up off of Cincinnati? Yeah, I mean, I'd say that's probably too far in the past. The guys are battling their butts off. We do a good job. Um, and, you know, just got a great opponent this week in Philadelphia. Really talented front. Obviously, there's there's a rivalry there. I feel it. Um, I'm, I'm excited to get an opportunity to play in it. It's one you've always known about since you were a kid, like your football. So, to me, it's all about Philadelphia and this front. It's a, it's a really good front. Vic Mangio is a really good coordinator who's influenced a lot of defenses in this league. So, it's another opportunity to go against him and, and their front and his scheme. Um, so, we're really just worried about the challenge at hand for this week. Does their front present? Pardon me? What challenge does their front present? Like yeah, they're big and explosive. Um, and, and he'll give you some different structures, some different front structures, um, just which will change up some of your angles or some of your matchups and your combinations. But I think it starts with their personnel. Um, I mean, there's a lot, of, a lot of draft picks in there that are talented players that, that play it the right way. They're physical. So it's a, it's a good opportunity. Is this one of the better pass rushes you'll face this year, do you think? It's the NFL. Yeah. You got good rushes every week. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, truly, to me, like, like it's you're holding on to your breath every week. So. I mean, was he making the right play but got hit? Um, because it looked like he was going to throw it out of the end zone. Yeah. It, yes, in that regard, of the intention is right. Of for sure, the intention to go ahead and throw it out of the end zone is right. The, you know, um, the execution of it, obviously, is what we want to be better at. So I would say yes, in terms of the intention of what his decision was, um, but you know, just the execution of it and knowing where we are on the field and where we're, what's at stake with that play and the ball being the most important thing for sure. And, you know, like I said, he hasn't done that all year and it showed up in one spot where we'd like to have it back. and. You know, he'll be the first person to tell you that. How can you help him get the ball into the end zone more? Because it seems that's where you guys have struggled. Yeah. Intent of the play, um, following the intent of the play. uh, You know, I think getting the ball into the end zone takes all 11. But ultimately, when the ball is into your hands as the quarterback, you know, maybe more awareness to scramble rules, things like we, we take a look at everything down there and how can we, you know, stretch the defense more horizontally than vertically down there, obviously, because the space becomes more condensed. So we went back and looked at it um, like we do with everything, um, good and bad. You know, what are we doing good? So how can we keep that going? What aren't we doing as well at? And maybe do we have to tweak a thing here or there? So I'd say just knowing the intent of the play down there, executing it, um, and keep taking keep taking our shots. Don't get gun shy. Keep going down there. Can I ask you a random Tommy DeVito question? Sure. How, how, how is he 
how is he progressing compared to where he was last year and just sort of dealing with going from you know being a, 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 in his star moment to going back to just kind of the grind and working at things how's he doing yeah he's he's handled that um great i think that I, I think I, i'm pretty sure somebody has asked the same question a couple weeks ago and and it's funny because i hadn't thought about it until then um but it's really impressive in terms of how the room just came together even with all of that um you never want to see some things happen like that like oh this guy had success and, you know there's none of that with any of them um the room's really tight we have a lot of fun in there every day uh tommy has been awesome in terms of growing within the system you know from this time last year which I don't think at this point he had played. I think we're coming up close to yeah. getting close to when he did go in. Um, so if you take a look at him then to now, um, I wouldn't say it's night and day because he, he was doing a good job, but that's kind of the natural progression for a rookie, especially an undrafted rookie, yeah. um, to be in a second year in the system. He knows it as well as anybody. He's done a great job studying it in the off season. He takes great notes. Uh, I sit next to him in the team meetings and in the offensive meetings, and I look over at his notebook, and it's impressive. Um, so the kid's very detailed. He is attentive, asks great questions. He's done a great job with, with his progression. So 2024, young players still do it. Still, like, still has his penmanship. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yep, might be the Catholic school, uh, Catholic school education. I had one too, and you know, I looked down at mine and his, and I'm like, ah, he still got it in him. I grew out of it. He had high wing speed elements that that were above average than, than some of the other runners there, so that's where he actually caught our eye. Obviously, he has ball skills that um, you know, having the receiver background, and and you know, I, I kind of look at him as a piece of putty. You know, we're we're still forming him into the the player and the style that that we want as far as what's required for this offense. So, I mean, he can catch, he can throw, you know, all of them. They, they, they've all not throw. <laughs> Sorry, he can't throw actually. <laughs> um, no, um, no. Uh, you know, he, he can catch, run, block, and all, all three of them can do that. Um, but um, he's, he's brought a nice, mature um, skill set and play style to this offense. What would the, that final piece of putty look like in, in the ideal form? What are well, you guys hoping? I, I, want, I want a guy that, that continues to evolve and get better week to week. I mean, it's far from the finished product. And the injury he had during training camp, I mean, that was, that was a setback for a couple weeks because he was ascending and then it kind of just leveled off there for a couple weeks while he was on the mend. And I think now we're seeing where we wish he would have been at at the beginning of the season versus, you know, here, you know, later on in the season. When you get motor back, what does that combo look like to you? Is it one more than the other? Is it dual? Or well, I, I think it's... that, that honestly, how the flow of the game goes. You know, I mean, it, it, somebody might have the hot hand. I mean, that's I'm, I'm pretty – I operate that way. Obviously, we have our, our personnel groupings where somebody will be in for sure. But, um, you know, it's nice to have healthy bodies. I mean, that's what you go through OTAs, training camp, all that stuff with. And, and like I said, all three of them. I mean, you're talking about two of them, all three of them. I got ultimate confidence in them as far as executing the, the, the assignment. And then where's Eric Gray at in your eyes? Eric, Eric, you Eric I mean – Listen, he's he's improved with his pass protection immensely. In Seattle, there's some reps there that I have not seen done, you know, in, in years as far as, you know, adjusting, popping out, picking up defenders. So he's locked in. He's been awesome. Um, you know, obviously, they had the fumble down there in the goal line, and that, that's never a good thing for any player, especially a running back. So that's got to continue to get corrected and pressed, and that's my job to do. Yep. Is the uh, screen pass a popular play in your room? Oh, I mean, anytime I mean, you, you get what you put into something, and, and we've had a good emphasis over OTAs, and, and obviously if you can get a ball in their space and you have big people in front of you, I don't think anybody's going to really sit there and shy away from it. So, you know, it's been something that, that you know, pleasantly we've, we've, we've worked well, and, and, you know, hopefully we continue to, to build on it here over the course of the season. I think when, you know, because he was a former receiver, mm -hmm. a lot of people thought Tracy was going to be more like a third down perimeter type runner. 
I said, did you expect him to be this kind of guy who can be power back over you know I, I felt like after evaluating him in college like I said before he, he's raw he's a piece of putty we can form him I had good intel there at Purdue with some connections that I've had from coaching there and in what he brings to the table is maturity and he's not a finished product by all means so and he's grasping on to the things that we're preaching and coaching and and there's still things that, to get better and like I said the injury has set him back a little bit mm-hmm. but 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 he's he's playing confident right now, and and that's what you need to have a rookie. And, and there's still a lot of ball left. I mean, the college season ends here in like in the middle of November, and we still got what six weeks to go. Mm-hmm. So that's something that um, obviously the, the longevity of the, the season he's got to make sure he's ready for as well. To get Malik back, and is there anything you have to do to kind of you know get him back in the flow? Anything me personally. Is that, yeah, what, yeah, is that you what from your position as a posi- his position coach? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think it's just you know w- once he started feeling right, um, it's easy to settle right back into the routine that we have uh, positionally. Uh, you know, he didn't miss any meetings or anything like that. And it was just a matter of him, uh, you know, getting through the protocol and feeling better. So he's he's just jumped right back in the routine. What's been the most impressive thing that you've seen with him? Like, what, like what kind of has stood out to you, right? We, we saw what, kind of what he did in those first four games. Yeah, of his I, career. I think, you know, with, with rookies, you get limited ex- exposure to them, um, you know, on a daily basis. You can obviously evaluate the player and the performance, so you get a pretty good idea what you're getting there. But uh, you know, he's very, he's highly intelligent and really understands the game. Obviously, an instinctive player, on, you know, on the field. Um, but when you get around him in, in the classroom and, and uh, you know, in the walkthroughs and all that, like, he can handle a lot of information. He's, he's really smart. With Darius now, um, obviously he got a lot of targets in that role, mm-hmm. right? He kind of almost slid directly mm-hmm. into that role. Mm-hmm. Was that almost like a reminder in some way, hey, we need to find a way to make sure he gets the ball also, even even when Malik is back, right, to, to make sure he gets – he gets fed, for lack of a better term, as well. Right. I think we got a lot of confidence in, in all the guys that we're putting out there at, at wideout. Love the way that Slay stepped up and um, and was able to, to shoulder the load there for the last couple of weeks. And I think he just proved what he's always proven when given the opportunity. Um, he's very dependable, and, and he's going to make plays. So uh, we got a lot of confidence in Slay. He's done everything that we've ever asked him to do, um, really with a smile. and. Um, He's, he's been a productive player here for a long time, so I think people got to pay attention to him. What can you say about his toughness? You see, like, you know, he's had the thumb, he's playing through yeah. that, he got banged up last game, he's limping around, he gets up. I think it's a, it's a great head, question. I, I, yeah, it's a great question. I think that, uh, you know, probably doesn't get talked about enough, uh, the things that he does for his team um, and how unselfish he is and, and all the jobs that we ask him to do. Um, he, he, he always steps up and does them, and does them well. Can you yep. talk a little about Wandale? I mean, he's like catching at least five balls a game, it mm-hmm. seems, and he's yep. getting all those tough third down yards. So. Yeah, Wandell is, I think, you know, I don't think. I mean, he's healthy, right? So the first couple of years he was, um, you know, fighting some injuries and things like that and some bad luck, and he's been able to be healthy. He's another guy who's really, really smart. He's competitive. He's got excellent short area quickness and lower body strength and is able to escape, you know, from guys in, in uh, tight spaces. And he's a guy that we really rely on. He, you know, he's always going to be where he's supposed to be and um, has done a really good job with his run after catch, uh, catching the ball and getting north and, you know, just sticking his foot and breaking tackles. So um, those guys are always really valuable chain movers there in the middle of the field. Mike, yeah. um, how impressive has it been for Malik? To see, it seems like he really recognizes what defenses want to do against him. He seems like he sits in his zone, like he recognizes zones, man, mm-hmm. at a pretty quick pace for a rookie. Am I wrong with that? I, mean, I think he's, he's just an instinctive player, Chris. Right. I mean, um, <clears throat> he's got a really good feel for the guy, you know, right across from him, um, but good spatial awareness too, like you're saying, and, and zone coverage. And, uh, you know, he and, and Daniel have a you know, good connection and rapport going out there. Thank you. Yeah. What's, uh, what's preventing you guys from hitting on more explosive pass plays? I mean, I think it's a variety of things. Um, I feel like it's just the topic of discussion these days. It's important, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, explosive plays obviously help you score more, and um, you got to let them come to you. You got to hit the hit the plays when they're there. You got to make some contested plays. You got to make some tough and contested plays. You got to break tackles on short throws and turn them into long runs. Uh, you know, 
how C.J. Brown, the type of physical contested ball receiver that, where you want to see the Tay like be bring out that physicality. That's why you drafted him, right? This physical corner, right? And <laughs> Brown's going to test that. Well, you know, you, you have those big physical receivers in the NFL like every week. Everybody's got one. Yeah, like every week we faced one. Um, and and every week you got to go fight those guys and challenge those guys. And you got to know, like they call them 50-50 receivers for a reason. Like they, because the quarterback says he's out there one-on-one. It's a 50-50 chance I get it, so I'm going to give them a lot of chances. And the more chances I get them, the more I think my, my chance of getting a big, a big play goes up. Um, you got to know that during the week in your prep, and you got to always know, even if I got him covered, it means nothing because the quarterback trusts this guy. They pay him a lot of money to go up and make those, those um, plays for them. Um, and we got to know that even when he's covered, he's not covered. And I got to be ready to finish and get the ball on the ground. Okay, so I'll just stick the knife in you again. <laughs> but could you explain what happened with that burrow touchdown run? Yeah. Um, don't hate me, coach. Yeah, no. Perfect storm of trying to take away two receivers okay. um, and, and working – you know, kind of pushing the field to take away two receivers, and then the ball spit away from us. Those two receivers running courses, coach. Uh, they were running outs. Yeah, the, the, running the, outs. The, the whole field went to their bench. The whole route went to their bench. So the coverage kind of folded over the, to the bench, and then quarterback went the other way. Not not what we um, wanted. You know. Thank you, coach. Yep vein of that how tough is it to watch jp fall on the ball basically and can't pick that one up oh uh, yeah you there. yeah yeah you know you'd love to get that one and see what happens in the game um you know he was trying his butt off to get it you know sometime the ball bounces the other way that's one of those yeah and, we, and we're just always digging and, and trying in our prep to to get those um and give ourselves the best chance to get it that's one we didn't get that we wish we would have How's that the development of Cordell? What have you seen from him just over the course of the season? Um, you know, the thing with um, Cordell for me has always been just remaining healthy um, because when he's healthy and plays, the more he plays, he just continues to get better and better and better. Um, and I, I just hope I, there's some wood around here to knock on. I would knock on it. I'm going to go knock when I go in the building that he continues to stay healthy so that he can just continue developing and growing. When you look at it, every time that 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 he's like not played as well it's usually coming off not playing because of being injured um if he plays i, I think he's just going to continue to get better and and be more consistent and, and more of a playmaker for us you know he's such a a reliable kid he's such a good worker um he's such a studier and prepare and, and everything's important to him um and i just expect him to continue to grow Um, you know, he's continuing to develop in his communication. Um, like he is always talking and communicating and, and very authoritative um, with his communication. And you just look for him to grow in his experience. Um, you know, there are some things he hadn't seen yet, situations um, where, you know, he's got to understand there was one play where like as a safety, like there is that I got to go versus Ooh, this is big space. I need to slow down and be sure. And and understanding that decision making of, all right, this is a go situation. No, this is a big space situation. I need to slow down and make sure I get the guy on the ground. There's a little bit of, of what um, he's working on right now to, to, to grow and go to the next level. We'd like to see him go to. I'm not being, what about Drew? What about Drew? Drew, um, you know, Drew is like again played played well. He missed the 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 one week where he wasn't available for us, um, but like the more he plays, like you just see his competitiveness show up all the time. Like he never turns down an opportunity to go get on contact. He challenges and coverage all the time. He's been been really really good for us. We just keep him growing and. And all these, all these guys, like, just keep growing, keep getting experiences. Every week, it's it's a new week for them, new challenge, um, and um, we just gotta continue to push and, and get better. With, with the authority, 
authoritative way. You talked about, you know, Newman being like kind of authoritative, right? That's like a position where you can't really be a wallflower, right? Like you need like a alpha guy like McKinney, right? To yeah. be a leader. And is he, when he, he's, you, he, you know, that? he's trending that, that way. Did yeah. you see that from him in the pre-draft process? Oh yeah, absolutely. You, 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 and you talk to the people there and, and that's what he was for them. Um, one of their alphas. Um, and, and, you know, that's part of what you knew you were drafting yeah. in him. That's why he's here. I, I feel really good about the depth in the room, you know, um, not everybody is at Burns' level, but that's just the way the league is. You know, but for um, where everyone's at, who they are, what their skill sets are, how they're wired, I, I feel really good about all of them, and they're all working daily. You know, Benton Whitley played a couple snaps, I think it was two this year, and did a good job. You know, Z stepped up the other night, Patrick Johnson's been playing, yeah. so, you know, hopefully no one has to, you know, do more than, you know, what they're doing right now, but if that happens, you know, we'll just elevate and next man up mentality, and hopefully they can all uphold the standard. And I think Z's did a great job showing that the other night. Like, you know, Kayvon's out, Z stepped up and did that. So that's the expectation for everybody. What does Aziz bring that's different than Kayvon? Z's has a really good um, feel for pass rush, really, really, a really good natural feel for it. Um, so he's always going to know where the quarterback's at, you know, know what the tackle's doing. You know, a lot of times with the frontline guys, you can put them on a certain tackle going into the week and they can study that guy and have a real crystal picture of what their rush plan will have to be for that third swing guy being Z's. He's got to be able to kind of bounce between both and he can handle that. He can feel the guy set, their punch, angle and all that. So naturally he's got ability, the skills and traits within that are a little bit different across all guys. But I'd, I'd say just Z's natural feel will always give him a, a chance to win against any tackle he goes against. You had Burns and him kind of just play aside more than you had early in the year, right? Yeah. Was that just game plan or was that because something with those two guys? No, more game plan. We, we usually try to, you know, look at what matchups, um, you know, are favorable for them and for us. You know, sometimes it's tackle based, sometimes it's quarterback escape based, you know, but that, that game we felt good about them being on those two sides. The play where Burrow scored, is that a perfect storm? I mean, Aziz goes out, Chapman comes in, you're in man, and all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah I would say it was a perfect storm. Now, I mean, just for our position, Z's could have been better on that play, you know, and um, I think some other guys could have been, but you know, it's my job as a coach to help them be better in that situation. But that's, yeah. that's one we want back for sure, but you don't get them back. It seemed like in that Seattle game, Coach, you really got them isolated a lot in that mm -hmm. one one three technique. Mm -hmm and really seemed to work in his favor. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Is that, I mean, Coach, you, you've you been around Aaron Donald stuff. You, you've coached against him. I mean, it seems like he, when he's in those one-on-ones, it's a huge advantage for Dex. Yeah, I mean, you know, you you, you, you want to increase your odds. So when you have a player that's, that's good at, uh, you know, winning in one-on-one -on -one situations, you want to try to get him as many one-on-one -on -one situations as you can, um, whether that's on the center or whether that's on the guard. And, you know, so we try to do the best job we can as coaches to, to you know, get him isolated in a one-on-one -on -one situations. But, you know, you got to give the offensive coaches credit too. They're trying to do the best job they can to make sure they don't, they don't, he doesn't get those one-on-one -on -one situations. So it's kind of a chess match, you know, throughout the course of the game. And fortunately, you know, Dex is smart enough uh, to handle, you know, us making an adjustment. And the other guys on the field are smart enough to handle, okay, Dex is going to go here and you're going to go there. Sometimes you don't have that combination to where you can do that. And that's the thing that's that's good for us is that we do have that. How unique is that you're talking about creating one-on-ones for your nose tackle, mm -hmm. right? And most teams, you're not creating one-on-one for your nose tackle mm -hmm. to go pass rush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, he's a unique player. You know, he's a... He's a unique player. There's, there's not very many, uh, at least that I'm, that I know of, big guys um, that can go out and uh, and rush a guard, you know, one on one in a pass rush situation, and that that's a part of the thing that, that makes him unique. Now, for me, I'd still li like for him to be over that center, because that's where I think he's the best in the business at that. Uh, but if they're not going to allow us to do that, then we got to be smart as coaches to put him someplace to where he can still go be Dex. Why? Why do you think he's the best in the business at that? Like, what makes you? What is? What skill is it that makes him so good at that? Well, he's he's big, he's long, he's powerful, explosive, and he's got quick feet. And I think that's the thing that that tips him over is that a lot of big guys. There's a lot of big, strong 
long guys in the National Football League that play his spot, but they don't have the feet that he has to be able to catch up and get on top of a guy and still make his move, okay? And, you know, I'm trying to get my other guys in the room to do that, but, you know, they, they don't... They don't have that. We're gift. born with it, right? You know, and so <laughs> same, which which, which most which set, most right. guys don't have. Right, uh, so that's the thing that makes him unique. With Saquon returning, yeah. I mean, how do you stop him? I mean, I assume he's going to be getting the ball. Well, when you look at it, it's, it's not just him. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, Saquon's a very highly skilled player, really really good. But then you also look at the O line too. That adds another element. Uh, when they're a cohesive group, they're as good as, they, as there is in the NFL. And then you also got the quarterback piece also is a threat in the run game too. So it's a, it's a combination of all of it, right, that, uh, 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 you know, gives us some some issues. Coach, um, how you see Okereke lately with this trying to do these big plays in defense, uh, these turnovers? Um, well, it's, it's almost like in every game he wants to try to pick the big uh, ga uh, big play. Do um, you think that uh, Bobby wants to do uh, always this big play in every in every game? Uh, you, you know, I think he, he, he takes advantage of the opportunities that present himself. I think the big thing we always harp on is what first and foremost is like do your job and the, and the big plays will come to you. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, that's something that's been part of him. Him and his career has been like being able to get takeaways, get the ball out and doing to be able to do that. You got to you got to be able to take some shots at the football. And, and he does that. And uh, and he's mindful of the times where he needs to be able to uh, do that without creating some type of risk. But for the most part, we want we want him to be a playmaker for for us right? Sorry, yeah. so we we want we encourage that we encourage yeah. him to be able to try to get after the football and things of that nature yeah. along with like still doing your job within the realm of doing your job he asked for play special teams <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean he, he i know he's been a good special teams player in his yeah, past you know so uh he could probably help us there too also Mike is still uh, playing at a high level yeah i think mike is doing some really good things man i, I think those guys from week to week are are executing what we're asking them to execute. There's going to be things that we got to get cleaned up with him, but I, I, I like where Mike is at. Uh, I think he's been doing a good job. You see a big improvement from last year to this year with Mike, even though he's pretty, very productive last year. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's just. He, I think he's still playing fast. I think he, the game has really slowed down for him. Um, which has allowed him to be able to kind of anticipate some things while he's out there. So I, I think it's just part of the maturation process of like each year, you know what I mean? Things slow down, you have a better understanding of what offenses are doing to you and things of that nature. And I think that's really helped him.